What's happening, everyone? You know, I got a lot of questions about, did I watch the Super Bowl? Did I watch the halftime show? And the truth is, I didn't. I don't watch the NFL. I haven't watched the NFL in years. And I, in my lifetime, I've actually been a season ticket holder for two different teams, Cleveland Browns and the New York Giants. Growing up in Cleveland, you know, you had to be a Browns fan. It was the law. And in my house, my mom was a Browns fanatic. I worked at Cleveland Stadium from 1974 to 1980. So I saw all the great teams of the 70s come to Cleveland Municipal, Municipal Stadium, destroy the Browns, and move on with their career from the Steel Curtain, Roger Staubach, and the Cowboys. I mean, just all the great teams of the 70s. I, I saw them all. Moving into the 80s, you know, the Browns had some uh, some highlight years. But late 80s, and early 90s, I had season tickets to the Browns. And let me tell you something. Uh, on a Sunday in Cleveland, there was no traffic. There was no people on the streets. Everybody was inside watching the Browns, just how it was. And when they moved the team, it was devastating. It devastated the, the local community in so many ways that just can't really be explained. For them to take the team, move it to Baltimore, which I, his right, it's his team, do what he wants with it. But it was a real kick in the nuts for us uh, people at Cleveland. I had section row 48, uh, section 48, row 48, seats eight and nine. And my buddy was in the very first row all the way down. And all the years we spent watching games together, you know, as you know, going to a game, it's some good experience. You know, but at some point, the game started changing for me. It started changing for me when I thought the sportsmanship of the game uh, started going a little downhill. You know, when the guys started celebrating uh, for every single play instead of waiting for the game to be over. You know, when you dance around and, and you celebrate and then you lose, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, just not, not my style, not for me, you know. For me, the NFL changed when it turned into a TV show. If you look at games from the 70s, 80s, even to the 90s, and you're watching these games, you'll notice something. If you watch them on YouTube, you're watching the game. No one's cutting away to some celebrity sitting over there. There isn't a backstory to every player. Clifford was born with only one knee, no lips, and his cousin didn't have toes. He had adversity going through his life. And, you know, all this drama backstory that we got to have now. I mean, this and you know why this is, is because people in television that are TV producers are not fans of what they're getting into. They're not fans. That, that's why they're bored, bored watching this. <laughs> Who wants to watch this? We need some drama. We need some interest. We need to zoom in on some celebrity sitting somewhere because that's what everyone wants to see. Is it? Is it? Maybe it is. And that being said, you know, not for me. Another thing that I'll say about the NFL, another reason I don't watch it is because mm -hmm, the officiating uh <laughs> <laughs> is uh, a little questionable, man. It was one thing back in the day when you were doing it live and, you know, even before the days of the Jumbotron, when you could look up and see it. But, you know, nowadays with the rewind and, and the internet and everything that you could look at it twice, a hundred times and zoom on in, you know, many of these calls make it look like some of these games are uh, mm, 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 maybe on the fix. Chavez hit his last eight passes before that one, and here they go with Brissett. He didn't think he was down, and he's still going, and the officials are acting like it's still a live play. Brissett taking it all the way, and still no signal that he was down. Is there any way he's down? Elbow, forearm, he's going to be down. Yes, he is down. Now the question is, will they... But the play is not reviewable. 81 yards. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Other people have other opinions. Bob, let me ask you this, man, because I read somewhere where you said that Super Bowl three. Hold on. Let's line this up properly. Okay. Okay. Super Bowl three. 
Baltimore Colts, the power of the NFL, taking out the upstart New York Jets from the AFL. You guys were the biggest favorite in Super Bowl history, right? No way you could lose. You end up losing 16-7. to What happened? Well, uh, I, I personally think the game was fixed. It was, the game was fixed. Yeah. Yeah. Why? So, Michael and and his peers can make the money that they make. Michael Urban, they make. you made the league better. Is that what you're saying? If it, if, if if you guys lost, see if if the Jets don't win that game, then they don't have the NFL the way it is today. Oh, because it was the merger. It was the, it, it was the merger. That was right. The How did they fix a game like that? It's easy. The quarterback. Yeah. If you remember, we went inside the 25 times in the first half right. and come away with no points. Right. Which is not a characteristic of a, a hmm. cold team. But nobody came to you and said, hey, Bubba, here's oh, no, Zito. No, 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 no. Well, who did they go to? Uh, Sorry. You see how Bubba looked at Chris You're trying to get me killed. <laughs> But who did? So they went to the quarterback. That's what well, you feel. That's what you feel. I feel. I know he was in on it. Yeah. If you if you go way back and look at all the Super Bowls when when it's Super Bowl week, now uh, they run every Super Bowl, right? Right. Now when you get to three uh, this year, when you just happen to be watching it, you'll see Jimmy Orr standing down in the end zone like this. Nobody's within 30 yards of him. He's the primary receiver. Right. Well, and Earl never looked that way. You're talking about Earl Morrill, your quarterback there. Did Was there ever a time during really, the game? You really trying hard. <laughs> well, I mean, we can all look it up there. <laughs> please, just please don't punch me. Um, please do. <laughs> don't hurt him. Did this come to you years later, the day of the game? Because I mean, this is kind of serious stuff here that you're throwing out on the table. No, this was the day of the game. That you uh, felt uh, that The way. night of the game. Uh, the, the night. You know, I went to what was supposed to be a victory party at Carol's house, Rosenblum. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I don't drink. So, you know that term, knock the poison off? You know, uh, so I had two sips of champagne. And I was sitting there, and, the, and, and this guy was on the dance floor, and I didn't, I didn't understand it. We just lost the biggest game. And he was game. celebrating. Yeah. We just lost the biggest game of our life. You know, how many times do you get in that position? Right. And, and, uh, and it just pissed me off. You know, and I went, up, I went up on the dance floor and I grabbed him. And I threw him out on one of those tables and they asked me to leave. <laughs> you know, and... And on the way home, on the way back to the hotel, I'm, I'm uh, in a cab. And you know, you know, you can look up, and and you see the cab driver looking at you. And and I, I said, uh, I looked at him about three times before I said anything. And he says, uh, Are you Bubba Smith? I said, Yeah. He said. Uh, Man, don't feel bad. He said smart money was on the Jets. Mm, okay. I said, I said, what do you mean? He said it came down high there. That put your money on the Jets. So was Earl Morrill driving the cab too? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are a dirty man. You are a dirty man. That is not nice. <laughs> no, the lead. Exactly. Is hey. what it is. Is what it is, but that's it for me in the NFL. You know, I am not gonna, I'm not gonna give you my attention and my eyeballs on a product that um. He goes like okay. two yards past yeah. the line of scrimmage. Two yards. That'll be second and eight. Okay, so it says second down. Yeah. All right, watch it. It should now be watch. second and eight, second, second and seven, eight, right? Second and yeah. eight. What it should be? Watch that.
I want you to come up here. Look, see how it was a second down? No, wow. Seven second, seven second and eight. Oh, oh, first and ten. 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 Another thing about the NFL, too, that irritates me is that they keep changing the rules. And then, you know, for the guys like Jim Brown, who used to play a 14 game season, you know, you're going to pay, you're compare his stats to a guy that's playing in 2022. Yeah, should have a different kind of category for that. Yeah, that's what I know. It's all entertainment. That's what it is when it went from, um, I guess it was always entertainment, but modern entertainment just devours everything. Modern entertainment just gets it, grabs it, and makes it a little bit worse. You know, shining it up, polishing it up. I don't know. You can't have a halftime show that's got uh, a, a diversity of music. It's got to be rap music three years in a row. <laughs> Nobody plays football or watches football that listens to country music. Shocking. You know, the last thing I want to say with Sleeping Poodle on my lap <laughs> is that I really resent the fact that the people of these cities, especially the people of Cleveland, had to pay for that stadium, for that football stadium that the NFL uses. The people of Cleveland paid for something that could only be used 10 times a year. Who, who, who builds a billion dollar building? that could only be used 10 times a year. Who builds a stadium in the North without a roof on it? it it's ridiculous and it makes no sense. And then they give all these tax baits, uh, breaks and uh, bonds that they do and the people always get screwed in the end. And what it means after the construction is over is a bunch of low paid jobs, the city paying for a bunch of police overtime uh, that they'd never get the money recouped back. And that's the reality of that. And uh, that's, that's what I think. You know, I mean, you want it, it's your sport. It's your thing. You take the ticket money. How about you pony up for the um, facility? <laughs> Not a lot to ask for. That is why I feel the NFL. Just not for me.